Hey, Michael Godwin here with The Benefit Company. I'm wrapping up our three-part video series on ICRAs. Uh, we've talked in the past about the basics of these programs um, and then also about some common situations that employers might face that would lend themselves to being good opportunities to consider an ICRA. And today we're going to wrap up um, with some considerations for employers that want to go down the road of implementing uh, an ICRA as part of their overall benefit strategy. So um, first thing to point out and to consider and to think about when you're going down that road is picking an administrative partner. So there are various administrative vendors out there that manage these plans uh, in terms of the compliance, the administration, um, and the enrollment of these types of plans for your company. So we would help you vet the options in the market um, and weigh the pros and cons of each vendor based on their abilities um, as far as their technology platform, their administrative and billing platform, and their support services for employees. Now, once you've picked an administrative partner, then you need to pick a start date for the plan. Good thing about an ICRA is that they can be started at any point during the year. Um, they do qualify for what's called a special enrollment period. So no matter when you start the plan, that would trigger a 60-day special enrollment period um, from which employees could choose an individual plan. So you've got flexibility there. Now, once you've got the start date in mind, then you need to finalize some plan design considerations. The two most important being, um, who are you going to offer the plan to, um, certain classes, etc. Um, and then number two, what is the reimbursement amount that you are going to provide to each employee? Again, as we discussed in a prior video, you do have flexibility there on the reimbursement amount. You can vary that amount based on the class of employee, location, um, uh, family size, uh, age, those types of things. Once you've got those factors in place, uh, then you move on to the legal phase of this where you do have to uh, put in place certain legal contracts um, since these plans are considered group health plans and are subject to IRS and Department of Labor um, uh, requirements. Now, a couple of important notes regarding compliance. Uh, for those groups over 50 employees, um, the affordability requirements and potential penalties from the ACA would apply for NICRA, so keep that in mind. And also note that, uh, uh, as such, if an employee is offered affordable, excuse me, affordable coverage to an ICRA, they are not able to go on and buy individual coverage and qualify for a premium tax credit. Um, the other uh, important compliance consideration is that these plans are subject to ERISA and COBRA. And so if you have over 20 employees, you do need to offer COBRA continuation of coverage um, for employees and dependents. Now, once you've established all that, uh, the final thing to do is communicate the plan and enroll employees in the plan. And so we work with the administrator to design a customized communication plan um, for employees. And then employees are given the option to either enroll through uh, self-service via the uh, administrator's web platform, or more, more commonly, they're given the ability to schedule an appointment with an enrollment specialist who can take the time to sit down with them, answer specific questions, and help them choose the individual policy that makes the most sense for them and their family. So hopefully that gives you a sense of uh, the world of ICRAs and opportunities that are out there for employers. If you have specific questions about your needs, feel free to reach out, message me directly, and I'd be more than happy to talk with you. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.